when do we see something that might look like a, a major recovery when we look at the global economic regions and, and how would all this play out for trade? Quite a big question, I know. Yes, well, but actually that, that timing question is critical. In fact, this is the year, 2023 is the trough, the, the, the slowest point in our company's forecast for the next several years and coming off of really since going back since before the pandemic. Global growth this year uh, is is barely close to 2%, which is uh, bordering uh, from a global perspective on being recessionary um, globally. And we have some individual countries that have fallen into recession or, or teetering on that, on the brink of that. And it's not all due to the COVID overhang. There's still the repercussions from the Russian invasion of Ukraine and some of the other disruption that we've seen in some other markets. We have in, in China, the slower than they hoped recovery from the, the end of the lockdowns in COVID. So even growth in a country like China, which has sometimes in the past been the locomotive for growth, um, is not really producing the pace of growth that their own leadership had hoped for and that many exporters were looking for for 2023. But optimistically, what we are forecasting is that this year is the trough. 2024 starts to show signs of recovery. We will see a rebound in, in trade that's falling this year, uh, similarly um, to be much slower than in every any year since that very beginning of the first half of 2020 and the pandemic. But with the rebound coming out of this this trough in 2024 and even to 2025, probably not at the pace that many would hope it to be. We're not going to go back to five or six percent growth globally. We're going to be struggling to see three percent growth next year, four percent growth in 2025. And with some downside risk of certain countries like the U.S. still not yet, but still potentially falling into recession. So that there still could be a drag on some on trade demand, especially in 2024. Also, I should note that within industrial production, there are certain sectors in manufacturing and in residential housing that actually are in recession in, in the sense of how much there has been a decline from the peaks in the pandemic to where they are today. And that's led to what some are calling a freight recession, as some of the character of spending that is still going on by consumers and households and even businesses has shifted more back towards services and less focused on goods consumption, which has meant you've seen a bigger downward swing this year in the goods production, manufacturing, inventory building, logistics handling industries than in the services sectors that have that have seen a, a more lagged response and slightly stronger growth in many sectors in services this year.